Hello students, welcome back to the class of pharmacology. In our previous lectures, we have talked about the synthesis of cell wall by N-acetylglucosamine, N-acetylmiramic acid, their chain elongation and cross-linking of the cell wall. We have also talked about the classification of cell, of cell wall synthesis inhibitors which can be classified as beta-lactam antibiotics and non-beta-lactam antibiotics. We have also talked about beta-lactam antibiotic penicillins. We have classified them. We have talked about their antibacterial spectrum. We have talked about their adverse effects. We have also talked about one other group of beta-lactam antibiotics which is cephalosporins in which we have talked about their mechanism of action, first, second, third and fourth generation cephalosporins, their structure and also their antibacterial spectrum in which we have talked about that first generation, anti and, uh, first generation cephalosporins are more effective against gram positive cocci. Second generation cephalosporins are effective against your gram negative bacilli. Third generation are more uh, are effective against gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram negative bacilli and anaerobes and your fourth generation are also effective against gram positive cocci, gram negative cocci, gram negative bacilli and anaerobes with a high resistance against beta lactamases. Now we will be talking about in today's lecture about another beta lactam antibiotic group which is carbapenems. Carbapenems are either imipenem or doripenem, meropenem or ertapenem. We have four carbapenems, imipenem, doripenem, meropenem or ertapenem. Now these carbapenems, number one according, regarding their structure, once again they have they have this beta lactam ring in their structure. This is the reason they are termed as, they are considered beta lactam antibiotics. Number two, they have low susceptibility to beta lactamases, which means those bacteria which are producing resistance against different antibiotics by the production of beta lactamase enzymes, there are high chances that these carbapenems can be effective, can remain effective against those bacteria which are producing your beta lactamase enzymes. Why? Because they have low susceptibility to those beta lactamase enzymes. Number three, that they are administered parenterally. As we've already talked regarding penicillins and cephalosporins that they can either be taken through oral route or through parenteral route but in case of your carbapenems they are only administered through parenteral route. Clear? Then ertapenem among these carbapenems has long half-life. Among carbapenems, ertapenem is one of the carbapenems which has high or long half-life. Then most of them are not degraded, most of them are not degraded by your renal dehydropeptidase enzyme except imipenem. Your carbapenems are not degraded by your kidney, by an enzyme in the kidney which is renal dehydropeptidase enzyme except imipenem. Now this is very important. Because many of the times this is being asked in questions, many of the times drug which is blocking that enzyme is, is asked in the, is in the exam. So you have to remember this very important thing that among carbapenems, imipenem is one of the drug which is degraded by your renal dehydropeptidase enzyme. The rest of the carbapenems are not degraded by this enzyme. So next is imipenem degraded by renal dehydropeptidase enzyme. So, we have imipenem, imipenem, which is degraded by renal dehydropeptidase 1 enzyme to some nephrotoxic material. None of the carbapenems except imipenem is degraded by your renal system. Imipenem is degraded by your renal dehydropeptidase 1 enzyme to nephrotoxic material. So to prevent this degradation of imipenem, we can combine an enzyme, a drug which is celestatin. What is this celestatin doing? Celestatin is blocking, celestatin, celestatin 
is blocking this renal dehydropeptidase enzyme. So when we give celestatin in combination with your EME panel, what will happen? There will be decreased or negligible degradation of EME panel. We will have two benefits. Your dose will be reduced, which will be important for EME panel. And second very important effect will be, there will be decreased chances of nephrotoxicity. So, Celestatin increases plasma half-life of imipanum and second it, in, it inhibits the potentially nephrotoxic metabolite. So when we talk about the pharmacokinetics of our drug which is which are carbapanums you have to remember they are beta lactam antibiotics they are beta lactam antibiotics number one number two they are they have low susceptibility to beta lactamase enzymes which means they show to some extent, they are resistant to beta lactamase enzymes. Number three, that they are administered parenterally. Number four, that among them, ertapenem has a long half-life. None of the carb carbapenems except imipenem is metabolized by renal dehydropeptidase 1 enzyme. The degradation of imipenem by renal dehydropeptidase enzymes lead to the production of nephrotoxic metabolites, which leads to nephrotoxicity. Imipanum degradation by renal dehydropeptidase enzyme, the renal dehydropeptidase 1 enzyme can be inhibited by the addition of a drug which is celastatin. Celastatin is one of the drugs which inhibits renal dehydropeptidase enzyme and thus inhibits degradation of your, your imipanum. We will have two benefits of using imipanum with celastatin. There is increased plasma half-life increased plasma half-life of your imipanum and number two decreased chances of nephrotoxicity by imipanum. Then regarding clinical uses, I've deliberately not mentioned the mechanism of action of this drug. Why? Because carbapanums once again beta lactam antibiotics and we all know that beta lactam antibiotics have same mechanism of action. Number one, they bind to penicillin binding protein. Number two, what do they do? They block transpeptidation reaction by blocking transpeptidase enzyme. And number three, what do they do? Yes, they lead to activation of autolytic enzymes. So because carbapenems are your beta lactam antibiotics, they'll have same mechanism of action. Clear? Regarding clinical uses, they are useful for infections by organisms resistant to other antibiotics. Why? Because they show low susceptibility to beta lactamase enzymes. And you have to remember this very important thing that they are effective against a broad range of bacteria. So we term them as broad spectrum antibiotics. And as they are effective against a broad range of bacteria, this is the reason we can use them for empiric therapy. We have already talked about empiric therapy, that empiric therapy is defined as when we are unable to, when we are not, when the uh, infecting bacteria or organism is not known. In the absence of that, if the patient requires antibiotic therapy, the antibiotic therapy which, give, which we give to the patient is termed as empiric therapy. So these, because of their broad spectrum, anti, uh, their, because of their broad antibacterial spectrum, carbapenems can be used as for empiric therapy. They are effective against wide activity against gram-positive cocci, including penicillin-resistant pneumococci. They are effective against gram-negative rods. They are effective against anaerobes. So basically, they are effective against a wide range of bacteria. They are also active against, uh, effective against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. They are also effective against an, a, a keen, a, a Acinebacter species except Erdapanum. So, they are broad spectrum antibiotics. They are effective against gram positive cocci, including penicillin resistant pneumococci. They are effective against gram negative rods. They are effective against anaerobes. They are also effective against Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Echinibacter species, except Erdapanum. Clear? 
They're used in combination with the minoglycosides for pseudomonal infections. Once again, the same mechanism because your carbapenems are cell wall synthesis inhibitors. All cell wall synthesis inhibitors are bactericidal. Similarly, aminoglycosides, all the protein synthesis inhibitors are bacteriostatic except your streptogramins and your aminoglycosides because beta lactam antibiotic carbapenems are bactericidal. Your aminoglycosides are bactericidal. They both have synergistic effect. This is the reason we can use them in a combination against pseudomonal infections. Now, this is very important that MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus, if you remember, methicillin resistant staph aureus was generating a resistance against your methicillin, nephicillin, oxycillin, which are the penicillins which are resistant to penicillinase enzyme. In case of MRSA, what was there? There was a change in the penicillin binding protein. Although these drugs, although these drugs have low susceptibility to beta lactamase enzymes and can be effective against beta lactamase producing bacteria, but because of because they are beta lactam antibiotics and they have same mechanism of action which is binding to penicillin binding protein, this is the reason MRSA, which is called which is producing resistance by a change in penicillin binding protein these drugs are not effective not effective not effective against mrsa not effective against mrsa clear so when we talk about carbapenems carbapenems are beta lactam antibiotics carbapenems are effective against broad range of bacteria gram positive gram negative Anaerob, Pseudomonas, Akinibacter. They are not effective against MRSA. They have low susceptibility to beta lactamase. So they can be effective against beta lactamase producing bacteria. But they are not effective against the bacteria which lead to a change in the structure of penicillin binding protein. Regarding toxicity or adverse effects. Imipenem and celestatin combination. Why am I talking about this combination? Because celestatin is given in combination with imipenem to prevent degradation of imipenem by which enzyme? Renal dehydropeptidase 1 enzyme. These drugs can lead to gastrointestinal distress, skin rash, CNS toxicity. Please do remember CNS toxicity. Mostly there is an MCQ regarding seizures by Imipenem. And whenever there is a scenario regarding seizures caused by imipenem, what should be done in those patients? We should stop imipenem and give meropenem, start meropenem to the patient. Clear? And then we have partial cross allergenicity with other beta lactam antibiotics. So, GI distress, skin rash, CNS toxicity, including confusion, encephalopathy and seizures. Here we have to remember that if we, if we have a patient we, in which we have seizures by the use of imipenem, we have to stop imipenem and shift the patient to meropenem. Next we have meropenem. Similar to imipenem, the adverse effects of meropenem are similar to imipenem but they do not cause seizures. This is the reason if a patient has seizures by the use of imipenem, we have to stop imipenem and shift the patient to meropenem. And then ertapenem, we can have intramuscular injection, pain and irritation. Clear? So by this, we have talked about three beta lactam antibiotic groups, penicillins, cephalosporins and carbapenems. In the upcoming lecture, we will be, in the upcoming lecture, we will be talking about another beta lactam antibiotic group which is Astronam. Hope you will enjoy the lecture and will be waiting for your feedback to improve my lectures. Thank you very much.